All right, guys, what we're looking at here is my waste motor oil to diesel cleaner. I just consider it like a big washing machine, I guess. Anyhow, what we have here is an old compressor motor I had in my shop and a Ford power steering pump off of the Triton V8 series power steering pumps. They bolt to the block and they're a remote reservoir. You can see the tube running down to the, the 55 gallon barrel drum which of course becomes the reservoir for the used motor oil slash fluid that will be pumped through the power steering pump. And then I had them adapt a line for me down at Napa that will go to black pipe. They told me well this will only hold like 500 psi but I think a power steering pump maybe goes to 150, maybe a little more. Anyway, and it goes to this black pipe. I got a few valves up here. I can kick them off and run fluid through the filter and out the tube to dump it off into the truck or close that off as it is now. And this is a bypass, so I can bypass pressure from the main line. And this is uh, a pressure relief valve that comes on at about 100, 101, 102 PSI, just in case something happens to the centrifuge. Which, if you guys haven't looked into these, you can pick them up online. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but you can look it up. I, I think I paid 300 bucks for this one. And uh, I have a pressure gauge here. You're supposed to run these things at about 100 PSI. It starts spinning here. Actually, I think they want you to do it about 90, but, you know, if you start this thing out at 100, it warms up all this fluid, and by the time it, you know, you, it's warmed up, you're down to about 90 PSI. So everything kind of runs just like it's supposed to with this power steering pump, which is 2.6 gallons per minute, I believe. Yeah, 2.6 gallons per minute. I believe that this is what this is supposed to run at, 2.6 gallons per minute at 90 PSI. So it actually kind of worked out pretty well. I just guessed at the pulleys, you know, I, I, I kind of guessed what a power steering pump might run at at full speed when you're going down the highway at 2,000 RPM and just theorized about it and ran th this pulley setup and it, it turned out to be right, you know, the guys out there that are smarter than me with this will be able to figure out the math of your pulley size and the RPM of the motor. I, I can't remember any of it off the top of my head, but when I did do it, I tried to figure it out to where it would be running like the car was going down the road at uh, 2,000 RPM, so you don't, I guess, overstress the power steering pump. But it really doesn't matter in the end. That thing's only like 40 bucks, so you just pop it off and put another one on. Not that big of a deal. Anyway, uh, don't have a switch for this guy. Kind of got in a hurry. Didn't really wire in a switch, so you basically just plug it in. Hi. Plug it in. You can hear it going, and right now the fluid is bypassing through here. <clears throat> and once I start to shut this down, you'll notice the PSI comes up into the centrifuge. And you want to kind of start it out slow, and I always just put my hand on it to feel it. It's spinning. You don't want to just give it the full running right away. Kind of build up pressure into it. You can actually see it spinning. As it goes, give it a little more. You can hear it changing tone. And if you can feel it, you can see it vibrating. It's starting to spin. There it goes. And as it picks up speed, you'll hear the pitch change. Give her a little more. Let her run right there for a little while. Fluid's still a little thick, but we're basically just filled up with used engine oil and about 10% regular unleaded gasoline. Now, I've, I've already washed this stuff for about 18, 24 hours, and we pulled out a bunch of crap, a bunch of goo. This will pull out down to half a micron. You can, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but you definitely can feel it. It's spinning good. And when it's thick like this, you know, you can get a lot more PSI than what you need. And you, you might have seen over here, the bypass valve kick out right at about 100, 101. 
to come back down so we don't have to run off the bypass. Right there. And she's steaming in there, guys. She's going fast. So let me kick it down here. I'll show you what we're working with. I mean, let, basically, let, let this thing run for, I'd go 24 hours is what I do. Mixes it up real good, pulls out a lot of the garbage. A lot of guys online will tell you, go until it's, it won't pull anything out at all. And I'm telling you, this thing will keep pulling stuff out for days and days and days. You know, it's at what level are you willing to run? Remember that the fuel we get from the store is not perfect either. It has paraffin in it. It has garbage in it too. So, you know, the old truck drivers used to say if it was good enough to run against your bearings in your motor, it's good enough to run your motor. So back in the day, we ran older style diesels. Guys just change the oil and dump it right in their fuel tanks. And I remember when I was a kid, we did that crap all the time. So this is just a way to get it a lot cleaner. And then even after I build this stuff, I make it on spec with the 10% regular and leaded, I still mix the stuff about 50-50. And I run it in a 7-3 liter power stroke. And I hear a lot of talk about how that'll destroy your motor, this and that. I've been doing it quite a while. And I've not run into any problems. I do change my fuel filter probably twice as often as I would normally. But, uh, you know, truck gets better fuel economy on it, runs better, starts better. And uh, I'm pretty vigilant about keeping the, the system pretty clean. So, also the secret I think to it is to, you know, every other fuel tank you run through your truck, run something to clean it out a little bit. And you know, be wary. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't run this on any new diesel, no six O's or six seven Fords or even the new Cummins or nothing. You know, but then again, I wouldn't run one of them piece of garbage anyway. If it doesn't, if it can't be run somewhat off grid. I'm not really that interested in it. So let me show you what we're dealing with here. I'll get this thing turned down. You never want to just take it totally off pressure because then you'll lose pressure against your bearing in here and it won't have fluid running through it and it can seize it. Ask me how I know that. Once it starts coming down, you just feel it. It's still cooking in there. Again, my daughter and I built it. While this is coming down, we'll show you the uh, ice cream truck. I got to do a video here pretty soon about it. Uh, remember that off the grid living is also about getting cash. And getting cash that, uh, you know, is easier to do taxes with, if you catch my drift. So, you know, it's not just about making cool gadgets and living you know, on the land. It's also about being able to do something that you like to do that gets you cash. And uh, this is one of the things that we decided we would do and my wife loves it. But that's a video for another time. Let this come down. And you hear it coming down. I'm just going to flip this valve here, which will run through my filter, and start to close this one off. And now the oil isn't going through this system, it's going through this system. And we can take a look at what we're dealing with here. There it is, black diesel. Yes, it looks nasty, but I'll tell you what, truck loves it, really loves it. And I don't know if it's just the design of the 7.3 liter, you know, you guys can go online and, and look into that if you're really interested. But those injectors sit right on top of the motor. Those injectors sit right on top of the motor in hot oil. You know, oil temperature oil. And uh, it, so, in some ways, the HEUI system in the 7.3 liters is really conducive with this type of stuff. In other ways, you got guys that will tell you there's absolutely no way you should do that, you shouldn't do that at all. 
But, you know, if you're running your truck as far as I am to go to work and up to the cabin and so on, you know, by the time the motor's trashed, I'll pull it into the shop and rebuild it, and I still will have saved money after buying $3 a gallon diesel. What a ripoff. You know, I think with everything I'm looking at, about 15 to 25 cents a gallon in this stuff. And that's a pretty large savings over the course of time. You know, obviously, I'm a pretty decent mechanic, so if it goes out or something busts, I just wheel it into the shop, yank out the motor, yank out the top end, whatever I got to do, rebuild it, you know, spend a bit of cash on it, but then I'm still saving money, not paying $3 a gallon, which will go to 4 next year, which will go to 5 next year, which will go to you name it. Sky's the limit as the dollar collapses. So here it is, guys, and uh, I know the video is a little bit long. If you have any questions, you know, go ahead and uh, ask them. And uh, I'll try to answer whatever I can, tell you my experience with it. Um, you know, projects that are coming up with this in mind, we rebuilt, and you can't really see it here, but we rebuilt a Mercedes OM617 diesel. I painted it cat yellow. And it's probably going to go in front of a ZF5 speed as well, and maybe in a Ford Bronco, or I may just build a completely off-the-grid uh, homemade tractor, which is something I've been thinking about doing. Four-wheel drive, kind of a uh, four-wheel drive buggy meets tractor meets backhoe meets work ve work vehicle. So we've been thinking about that, and and that should go on a video too. Sorry, it's been so long since I posted a video. Uh, like I said, very busy, been working out in the field, making the money to uh, get everything I want done done. Um, so anyhow, leave your your comments, questions and I'll try to respond. Thank you.